Well, it's Deanna Jennings to face Alyssa Zabala in the circle. Zabala's first pitch delivery in for a strike. Taking a look at the sophomore from Miami, Florida. It's her 12th start of the season. 12 wins on the season. You know, Joanna, she's been the ace for the card staff. She has, and you know, as her sophomore campaign continues to get a little bit longer, teams keep getting more and more information. So for her, it's important to really be accurate. She's gonna dominate in that upper half, and the improved changeup is gonna help her quite a bit. When she faced this team a year ago, that's not a pitch that was in her repertoire. Yo and two to Deanna Jennings. Over to Richardson. Brazil steps on the bag to retire Jennings. Take a look around the diamond at the cards defense. We talked about Alyssa Zabala in the circle. Kylie Goff catching, rounding out that battery at third. Bailey Richardson, Daisy Hess at short. Ali Alexander at second. Riley Frizzell at first. Outfield left to right. Paige Garrity, Chelsea Mack, and Vanessa Miller round out the defense for the cards. Now it's on a gold. You mentioned her briefly. Zabala's first pitch in for a strike. And that pitch was huge. That's a change up first pitch called strike early in the game. And she's got to be able to do that to keep these hitters off balance. It's a great start from Zabala. On a gold, the junior from Boston Spa, New York. All sorts of accolades after last season, NFCA All-Region third team, All-ACC first team, a two-time ACC Player of the Week. Jammed in and on the hands and a little spinner there, but Ali Alexander able to bare hand that and get it over to Frizzell at first. Well, and that's the ball's go-to is come back in on those hands and it does create a little bit of wicked English, so Alexander does a good job hanging on to that one, playing that off the bare hand quick first two outs here. Get a little smile there from pitcher Zabala, feeling good about her defense early in this game. And now it's Claire Davidson, the player you highlighted in the open, Joanna. She is the reigning ACC player of the week, had an outstanding week this past week. Went five for 13. Had a couple of home runs, seven RBI, scored four runs. Just putting, putting up all sorts of crooked numbers just on her own resume. <laughs> For sure, what didn't she do? And, and she's been doing that all season long. You know, the weekly accolades are nice, but it's the consistency and the body of work that you're after, and that's what helps your team be successful. And she's been able to do that. Zabala's pitch in for a strike, two and one now to Davidson, the senior from Lakewood Ranch, Florida. This one into center field. Chelsea Mack will make the grab for a quick three outs. For it's a great opportunity for her to have double duty, and it helps Louisville a lot with that extra power in the middle of the lineup. It's Chelsea Mack to face the ace in the circle for the Blue Devils. Jayla Wright, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. And you talk about an electric pitcher. She has been absolutely outstanding enjoying her senior season you know leads the country joanna with a 0.39 era <laughs> yep there's no missing numbers in that either my partner is right that's a <laughs> <laughs> that is a two-digit era she is so good and you know talking to coach young about what is setting her apart she didn't talk about the drop ball we know it rolls off the table didn't talk about the change up we know how hard it is to be able to recognize that but she talked about her process between her ears, right? What she's been able to do mentally, what she's been able to understand and really get the most out of the senior campaign. She's doing great so far. Well, a great at bat there by Chelsea Mack. Four straight balls and Mack is aboard with the free pass. And that's something we don't see a whole lot of from this Duke staff as a whole. No, I was gonna say, you can mark that down because it rarely, rarely happens. You know, for Wright, that is just the 12th walk she has issued so far this year compared to 61 strikeouts. You, you do not get free passes very often, especially in four straight pitches. It's Paige Garrity to the plate now to face 
Jayla Wright. First pitch misses high to Paige Garrity, the senior from Frankfurt, Illinois. And, you know, we're really seeing Paige be more of a mainstay in the top of this lineup. You know, in the earlier parts of the season, she was in that 7, 8, 9 spot. And now we're really seeing her, based on what her body of work has been, She's continued to inch her way up this lineup. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that comes from a production consistency standpoint. And you're trying to find people that can set the table for Hess and for Zell and Holloway and others. You gotta have somebody on base when you have them up. And Gary has shown that she can do that consistently and she's earned her way into the top of the lineup. Two and one. The count to Paige Garrity. Garrity sitting at a 322 batting average. Sends this to the left hand side. We'll get the out at first. Just Jada Baker at short for the Blue Devils. Baker did a really good job staying with that. She was thinking lead runner the whole time. And in the coverage with Garrity up, you were dealing with a short game. So second baseman pulled in two different directions. They're talking it out right now, but Baker, great job sticking with that and getting the out. So one out here for the Blue Devils. It's Daisy Hess, the fifth year from Ackworth, Georgia. Pitch in for a strike. Has the transfer from Georgia State the season before last. Swings on this, fouls it up and over the cutter center. Two to Hess, is swung on, fouled off. A cloudy night here, it looks a little chillier than it feels, about 60 degrees here in Louisville, Kentucky. Wind whipping in, into that, and there's a great shot into right center field. Chelsea Mack has the wheels, will cross the plate, and it's a stand-up double for Daisy Hess. And cards get on the board first. Yeah, textbook's execution here for Louisville. And if you could script an inning for them, it would be just like this. It's philosophically what they try to do, lead off runner on, move her over, and then get a big hit, and they do. Daisy Hess goes down to get this ball. We talked about the drop ball that Wright throws. This one is rolling off the table. Great barrel control. Hess drops that bat head and drives it into the gap. Cardinals on the board. So Cards making Jayla Wright pay for that walk she issued to Chelsea Mack. And now it's Riley Frizzell, the hot bat for the Cards. Highlighted her in the open. The senior from Willoughby, Ohio. Zell at a 351 clip has eight home runs on the season. Leads this squad with 32 RBIs. Wright's delivery is low. Two and zero to Frizzell. Is in for a strike. When you're facing someone as good as Jayla Wright, you might only get one pitch that looks like that and bad if you're lucky. That's a tough one to take, even in a 2-0 count. This is swung on, fouled off. That'll even up the count two and two. Second, Giselle Tapia 
at first, and it's Claire Davidson, Deanna Jennings, and Sarah Goddard left to right in the outfield for the Blue Devils. One out here, full count to Riley Frizzell. And the payoff pitch from right, swung on and missed. And a big strikeout, out number two for the Blue Devils. Yeah, Wright does a good job coming back in on that inner half, challenging Frizzell. That'll bring the designated player, Gabby Holloway, to the plate. Catches the inside part of the plate for a strike. Follow with the senior from Huntersville, North Carolina. You know, and Joanna, you mentioned this. It, you know, Holloway has been an outstanding pitcher inside the circle, has battled some, some injuries, hasn't given her the ability to focus on her offensive part of the game. And, you know, getting the opportunities this year, seeing her really find some success, getting some home runs since the first, since her freshman year. She had won her freshman she year. She did, yeah. And, and it's been a great opportunity for her to be able to perform on both sides of the ball. And, and it's been helpful for her team as well. And, you know, and you see that work both right, ways, right? Because on the other side, we've seen Claire Davidson, now that she's not pitching, yeah. be very successful in the batter's box. So sometimes it's a detriment and sometimes it's a help. The 0 and 2 is in for a strike. A backwards K for Jayla Wright. She gets out of it. She's just been steady Eddie for the cards. She has, and such a big difference when she can attack strike zones early, when she can work ahead of batters. We saw that in the last half inning. She was able to work ahead, and, and it makes a huge impact with her defense, too, because if you can limit the number of base runners by limiting walks, then your defense can play a little more freely. And the one thing about Zabala and the rest of this pitching staff is they're really not going to throw complete games. We, do, we don't see that. I don't think it's in their, in their plan. And when you are trying to manage arms and have some things be pieced together, you have to watch that pitch count. So that's one thing that they hope they get from Zabala is get ahead early so we can save some innings for later. It's Amina Vega at the batter's box, the sophomore from DeBerry, Florida. Pitch missing inside. And she did not go home. Oh, they're saying it hit her. Pardon me. Got her in the elbow. So home plate umpire David Reinecker allowing the free pass there. And just as you said, what Louisville doesn't want are those free passes trying to limit the hit by pitches, trying to limit the walks. And it actually get looks like it clipped her back elbow, not her front elbow, as she swung through that or looked to try and swing through that. Yeah, that's always the question, right? Because if she's swinging, it's a strike. And uh, I can't can't say I've seen very often that a, a home plate umpire has asked a field umpire, "Hey, did you did you have a hit by pitch on that?" So a little odd sequence there to start the top of the second. Ricky Sexton, the umpire down the first baseline, and Steve Wenner rounds out the crew. This is popped up and it'll be out of play. Francesca Freelick, Lexington, Massachusetts. Lays down the bunt. Frizzell applies the tag. Freelick with the sack bunt and advances Amina Vega 60 feet into scoring position. Well, it's really interesting because Duke doesn't have a lot of sacrifice hits on the year. So to see that being put in play early is unique. It's either, you know, helping your athletes be able to see a little better for Zabala being able to track that pitch a little better or just wanting to get something going, move a base runner, try to create some offense. But very rare for them on the on the sacrifice hit. Just 12 on the season, as Joanna mentioned. First pitch into Kelly Torres is inside and fouled off on the hands of the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh, 
Duke named number four in the country this week in the ESPN poll. Overall, 24 and two is their record. The Cards bringing in a 19 and 10 record. As he has moving across the diamond, making an outstanding play. Vega will advance another 60 feet, but two outs now for the Cards. Yeah, even a better play from Hess when you really look at how far Zabala gets out of the circle to try to field this. She fields her position well, so Hess being able to see that, continue playing through the ball, that can be tough to do when you have movement in front of you. Good job getting that out recorded for this Cardinals team. Now it's Sarah Goddard. Fouls this up and over the press box. Sarah Goddard, a player that Coach Young really talked a lot about, like just obviously you can see her stats are, are fantastic, but she's just on the brink of even better and, and, and more greatness. Yeah, that's my favorite question to ask a coach when we do these meetings and calls is, who is it? Who are you seeing that is just right on the cusp of really showing everybody who they are and what they can do? And, and she didn't hesitate. Sarah Goddard was her answer, and she thinks that she's poised to have really a bust out season. The off speed is fouled off and into the stands. The Blue Devils had a midweek double header against UNC Wilmington. You see Sarah Goddard's numbers there. Three for four, two doubles, two RBIs, just getting it done in that double header against UNC Dub. And you never know what's going to get you started, right? It's a one, one game in the middle of the week or something that helps you kickstart your production. And Duke strands one with that pop out. On the recruiting trail from all over the country. And, you know, she started as an NAI head coach in Ann Arbor and was at Eastern Michigan prior to their program disbanding and then at North Carolina and has really seen softball from so many different levels. You know, her own kids playing travel ball and she's just such a champion of the sport bringing the best to do in their short lifespan right now as a program. Bailey Richardson at the plate to face Jayla Wright. Richardson, the graduate student from Locust Grove, Georgia. Another transfer from Georgia State, same place that Daisy Hess transferred from. Freelick. Able to collect that ball and get it over to Tapia at first, and that'll retire Bailey Richardson. And this is when you know Jayla Wright's at her best. If you want to know how she does it, it's it's that pitch. That pitch is in the dirt. There's no way that you want to hit or swing at that, and you just can't stop. You, you can't stop. It looks like it's going to be something else. She tunnels pitches so well, and you have so many people chasing things. We saw it with Florida State. We've seen it throughout the years. That's where she just finds her bread and butter. So. Three strikeouts in a row. In the first, she struck out Frizzell and Holloway, and now Bailey Richardson here in the bottom of the second. It's Vanessa Miller at the plate for the cards. Senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, and again, Joanna, you're right, just Louisville not looking comfortable in the box yet against Jayla Wright. Well, it's so difficult because we saw several pitches thrown to Frizzell and Holloway that had a lot of plate on them. Right, and then we see these pitches that are being thrown that are just disguised and you're not able to have you know, a clear pickup of the ball coming out of the hand and knowing where that's gonna end up. So just a testament to Jayla being able to work through her process and why she is finding so much success this season. And to the count to Vanessa Miller. Just misses outside, evens up the count two and two to Miller. Pitch fouls it off. Another 
two and two coming for Vanessa Miller. Miller with some sneaky pop in her bat. Five home runs on the season. Got a monster shot against Arizona in number 21. And this is smacked right up the middle. Vanessa Miller will make the turn. She'll stay at first base and a good single up the Miller, up the middle for Miller. Up the middle, Miller. Yeah, I like it. All right, I like it. Well, and, and Vanessa always is, does a really good job of taking advantage of the missed pitch. You can see a little bit of extra plate on that. And honestly, for Miller and so many Cardinals, just having consistent success and hitting the ball well, it just will help you later in the innings. You know, maybe you find an extra base hit like Hess did. Maybe you find a seeing a single, but being consistent through that process of finding pitches that you can put into play, that's what works for them offensively, and that's what they need to keep doing. Well, and Allie Alexander with some great small ball, and Vanessa Miller, the stolen bases leader for the cards, gets good jump, but she'll stay at first. She leads the cards with 11 stolen bases on the season. Outside, 2 0 quickly to Allie Alexander, the junior from Taylorsville, Kentucky. The Blue Devils have thrown out three base runners on the year. Miller is leading the category for this Louisville team. Again, Miss Alone outside, 3 0 now, the count to Allie Alexander. And Alexander's a hitter that really enjoys being deep in the count. You know, we, we laughed that a, a few <laughs> weeks ago, she I was actually being very aggressive on first pitches. We thought something was, was crazy, but she likes taking a lot of pitches, very comfortable deep in counts. 3-0 to Alexander, misses inside. And another walk, that's number 13 on the season for a player who only came in giving up 11 free passes. Yeah, that'll bring out a visit, and I'm sure just trying coaching staff for the cards. It's Kylie Goff to face Jayla Wright. Wright's pitch missing inside. It's Vanessa Miller on second base, Allie Alexander at first for the base runners. See Kylie Goff's numbers there. Just a 143 batting average has been hit by a pitch 15 times so far this season. That leads the ACC. Right pitch in for a strike. Well, that is the difference with, with Goff. She will find a way on base. She's very savvy. Also has a lot of sacrifice hits. I'm a little surprised she's not bunting here, but you also have a short gamer in Mac coming up on deck. So kind of hoping that Goff can find a way to get a piece of one, creating opportunity for Mac, who's on deck. A little tough spot of the lineup with two base runners and not a lot of power in your next two hitters. Nice block there by Freelich behind the plate to keep that ball in front. Knows she's got speed in Vanessa Miller on second base. A two and one to Goff, swung on, sent to the left-hand side. Trying to go for the double play, fakes the throw, but great play there by Anna Gold. It's such a difficult task to find, you know, that really hard hit ball against right, especially because it's usually in the bottom half of the zone. It's just tough to barrel things up down there. Goff doing the best she can, advances the runner. So runners on the corners now for the cards. Miller at third, Goff at first, turns the lineup over back to Chelsea Mack, who was given the walk scored a run back in the first. First pitch from right in for a strike. You see the defensive shift coming in for Duke. You're going to see three infielders on the left hand side of the play. You're going to see two infielders on the right hand side of the field, leaving right field open. Little chopper. Freelick will collect that ball in foul territory. Gives her pitcher Jayla Wright a few words of encouragement.
for Mac, who doesn't show a lot of power, this is a tough shift to beat. You know, you're being asked from a drop ball pitcher to put the ball on the ground. So really looking for some bounce to help her on this one. Again, it fouled off. Count will stay the same at 0-2. This is outside. Mac, the sophomore from Brexville, Ohio. Played for a season at the University of Kentucky before kind of about 60 miles west to Louisville. Swing and a miss, and another punch out for Jayla Wright. That's number four. Pete at the end of the year, who can challenge for conference championships, tournament championships, postseason berths and appearances, and they are teams that can complement themselves, whether their pitching's having an off day or their hitting is taking a little while to get going. And this Duke team has shown that that's who they are. That's their identity. They can play defense, they can hit, they can pitch, and that's a very complete team. Part of this complete team is captain, red shirt sophomore Jada Baker. And this was a player that Coach Young just sung the praises of, hardest worker, gonna get there to the field early, set up equipment, she's gonna help tear down equipment post-practice. Like, that's what every athlete strives for is to have that praise from their coach yeah you hope so and you hope that that's what they strive for to, to work towards as well and and the question came up is tell me about their sophomore captain you know you, you yeah. have a very old team how, how did that happen and she just said you know what everyone wants her to have success Love everyone that. wants her to have success and and she's a great defensive player doesn't have quite the offensive output as some of her teammates but still finds a way to contribute at the plate Three and one is fouled up the left hand side. Paige Garrity will give that ball a chase in foul territory. I think Coach Young called her the, the mother hen. So she just takes care of everybody else. I love that. As a sophomore, and this is a, you know, as you said, a very tenured team. Mm -hmm. Lots Absolutely. of seniors, only two freshmen on the roster. I mean, to be a red shirt sophomore, be a captain, and be considered mother hen. <laughs> it's a lot going on. It's a lot. Payoff pitch, fouled up, and over the cutter center. You know, sometimes in programs that are new, you will see that you, know, you have a lot of freshmen come in right away, and then four years later, the turnover. A lot of freshmen come in, the turnover. And so while the program just organically kind of spreads itself out you are left with just a couple of of younger athletes that are contributing with this team this year into the stands and a good battle here between zabala and baker this is an important out for zabala you're at the bottom of the lineup number eight hitter you got a full count so nobody out, getting this first out, being able to find a way to throw a book here. And that was a really good, really good pitch. And you know, as the old adage, good try, you know, it just didn't work out for a strike, but that's the right call. And being able to try to freeze or silence a hitter into something that they aren't expecting. loses the bottom of that changeup, but again, establishing that she has it, establishing that she will throw it in any count, full count throws it. It's important for not just the rest of this game, but the rest of the series. So Baker wins that battle, gets the free pass to first base. Tapia gonna lay the bunt down, fouls that off. Giselle Tapia, the graduate student from Long Beach, California. that 2023 NFCA All-Region team, All-ACC second team. It's just been a solid player for the Blue Devils every season that she's been part of it. 
Yeah, which has been a long time, right? She yeah. decided to come back, take advantage of the opportunity for that extra year of eligibility, and it just, you know, continues to build the continuity with the program. Very unique hitter in that she has speed. We saw her try to use the short game a little bit, and also hit gap to gap. She's tough to defend. Well, not only that, just a tough out in general. Only eight strikeouts in 177 plate appearances. Yeah, and, I, and I feel like we can copy and paste that for so many yeah. of these Blue Devil hitters. They're just extremely talented at barrel to ball skills. Jammed on the inside. Zabala moves to her left, gets it over to Frizzell at first. Well, it's not a sack bunt. She does sacrifice herself. And moves Baker up 60 feet into scoring position. So one out here for the Cards defense. It's going to turn the lineup over for the Blue Devils. Bring Deanna Jennings back to the plate. This is outside to Jennings. Jennings, such a dynamic hitter. She has had a little bit of a struggle with keeping her feet inside the box. You can see she's she's trying footwork-wise. She's as far back as she can get on that crossover. You can see that foot come out in front of the box. Bailey Richardson gets that ball on a one-hop. Brazil just tried to double pump there. Couldn't get the ball out of her glove fast enough to get that ball back to third base. But a good play there by Richardson to take this ball on the one bounce. Yeah, sometimes you get it stuck in your glove, and and uh, that's really all you can do. The speed of you know Jennings, you're not going to be able to, to take much time. So as a base runner, you can get a pretty good jump because you know that they're going to have to make a play quick across the diamond. This is outside on a gold. We'll ground out to second base, Ali Alexander back in the first. Takes that off the Evo shield and another hit by pitch. The second one of the game for Zabala. And you know what? This is a constant struggle between hitters and pitchers. And for Zabala against a right handed hitter, she has to command that half of the plate. Flew out to center field back in the first. And she's got runners in scoring position, two outs here. Off conceding the extra 60 feet to Anna Gold. Gold six for six on stolen bases on attempts on the season. Oh for one to Davidson is in on the hands and fouled up and out. Now Zabala working ahead quickly here. And again, that's the pitch, right? That's the same one that you know we saw hit gold, but just continuing to work that screwball. Rise ball inside on a righty away from Davidson. It's no two in scoring position. 0 and 2 though to Davidson. This is outside. And that's why Kylie Goff is here at Louis. Right pitch, missing outside. Paige Ger Garrity, ground out to short. See her stats this season over last season. She's just really come alive, both offensively and defensively this season. Looks like a whole different player. She does, and that's something that you know we've heard from Coach April as well. Of, hey, look, she's played a great left field, and sometimes you don't expect it or you don't see it in the stat sheet or whatever it might be, but she's come up with big catches, and she's been so consistent at the plate and finding a way to set the table. It's been extremely important, especially down the stretch. And across the heart of the plate, two and one, the count to Garrity. Oh, 
swings on this, and it's fouled off. Even, a, even up the count two and two. Hand side and a great play there by Vega getting a big deep breath there for Hess. Well, sometimes one of the best compliments I think you can give a hitter is when you say that they're a bad ball hitter. And Hess has always been consistent at attacking pitches that are out of the zone, whether it's because she has such long levers and she's able to use those to her advantage if she needs to expand a strike zone like she did in that last plate appearance. But she's always done a really good job with that and, and looking to continue finding a way on base here for this Cardinals team. Wright's first pitch into Hessen for a strike. Hess turns on this inside pitch, fouls it off. on the field there. Tapia wasn't really sure what to do with that. She's like, somebody, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> this ball, I gotta get rid of it. The 0 and 2 to Hess. This is on the inside part of the plate. 1 and 2 now. Duke standing in second place in the ACC standings. Five and one in ACC play. That lone loss against Florida State. They did win that series. But two out of three there. Louisville all the way in 12th place. They were swept by Virginia Tech. for that low ball there. Keep the count at two and two. This is a tough little swing for Duke. They went to Florida State and then traveling to Louisville for ACC series and they will get Virginia Tech as well, but also you know, looking at that coming up, it's a, that's a three you know, opponent stretch that's pretty difficult. Florida State team and Tech team above the on the leaderboard. And four ACC teams in the top 25 pull that misses on the inside. It'll be full count now to Daisy Hess. Duke at number four, Clemson number 11, Virginia Tech 12th, and Florida State rounding out the ACC teams at 18. Payoff pitch is swung on and sent into center field. Making a fantastic play is Deanna Jennings, who had a great read on that ball in shower, shallow center field. Uh, Jennings, such a tremendous athlete, playing deep, running in on that the whole way. I don't think there was a doubt in her team's mind that she was gonna have that. Communicating very well with Baker. She could give way. Now it's Riley Frizzell. Had a great battle against Jayla Wright back in the first. Way to full count. Ended up striking out. But got to see a lot of pitches that first at bat. do all the scouting reports that you want, but there's something to be said about seeing someone, right? And, and for Frizzell coming in from Missouri, hasn't seen this matchup. These Louisville hitters that have been here a while, they've seen Jennings for three years. Yes, she is having a campaign that it's not like anything they've seen from her before, but every at bat should build a little bit of knowledge, you know, as you continue facing the same team over and over. 
Great's pitch catching inside part of the plate to Frizzell, two and one. Foul tip there. A little wry smile there from pitcher Jayla Wright. Well, it's going to make you feel good <laughs> when you have great hitters that are chasing that stuff that you're just putting in the dirt. I mean, it's just uncanny, her ability. That'll be a whole handful in the latest RPI polls. Yeah, there's a really a difference every year between rankings and then this RPI number. And rankings have nothing to do with the postseason. So it's always important to remember that. And this RPI number is just a component of that selection process. But you can see that the ACC has several teams that are poised to fire off some very good RPI numbers. And generally, in a conference like the ACC, you will see those RPI numbers raise in conference play for the teams that keep winning because they're knocking off fellow high RPI schools. Do not envy the committee's work to go through that. Great play there by Allie Alexander. Bailey Richardson able to get the ball over to Alexander and get the lead runner for out number one. That was Francesca Freelick who hit that ball over to Bailey Richardson. You get a good look there at Allie Alexander. She's been such a stalwart for the defense. Kind of seen her all over in the infield for the cards. And when you say all over, you mean all over. All she over. spent a year starting at shortstop <laughs> as a freshman. So difficult to do. Sophomore campaign was the everyday starter at third base. She is very high on the depth chart and behind the plate. I mean, she can do a little bit of everything defensively. And for a strike against Kelly Torres. Torres ground out to short back in the second. outside and that is the fourth batter that Zabala has plunked this game yeah that's the first one that's really gotten away Away from her, yeah. though. And the others, you know, have been really close. And the, the Evo Shield several years ago truly weaponized the hit by pitch. And you have a lot of hitters that will just get over. I mean, you can see from the replay that there's really no hesitation. Taking a ball off the Evo Shield doesn't hurt. You practice it. <laughs> it might not be something you want to do, but when you are going to be in that area, it's something that's going to happen. And it's something the pitcher has to deal with as well as the hitter. So two base runners on. It's Freelick at second. Torres at first. Sarah Goddard, senior from Carmel, Indiana. Lays the bunt down. Bailey Richardson moving to her left. Gets the ball to Allie Alexander. Steps on first base for the out. Out number two here in the top of the fourth. But now two runners in scoring position. For Jada Baker. Coach Young really going to make us reevaluate, saying they don't sacrifice very much, isn't she? <laughs> a different look here in the, this ACC series. All right, it's like once every other game today, twice. <laughs> Maybe two and a half, depending on how you want to categorize one of the other ABs. Jada Baker, the red shirt sophomore from Longwood, Florida, giving the free pass. A good battle. Full count back in the third. 
came up with the walk. Two and zero to Baker. He's in for a strike. Baker red shirting back in 2022, and then last season, 2023, started 52 of 60 games, mainly at that shortstop position where she's playing all season long thus far. Number three prospect in the nation coming out of high school for her class by extra inning softball. A swing and a miss and a huge punch out for Zabala. Duke will strand two. We're going to head to the bottom of the fourth. Cards still lead. One, nothing. Just 13 batters faced and five of those have been strikeouts. Joanna Jayla Wright has been absolutely outstanding. Well, she has, and she's done it in a variety of ways. You see her freezing some of these Louisville hitters, but most of all, you see her inducing swings on balls so far out of the zone that even if they make contact with them, it's unlikely they're gonna hit the ball hard. And that's what we say about her using her defense and that drop ball change up mix. It's just been so effective. She averages more than one strikeout an inning, but well on pace today above that. Gabby Holloway, one of those five strikeout victims, struck out looking back in the first to end the first inning. Holloway, the designated player. Swings on this. Out of play. And that's a good adjustment. That's a pitch that Holloway took twice in that first at bat that she had. So just being able to decide, okay, what am I going to try to hit well? What do I need to see across the plate? O2 is tough. Now you're at the mercy of stretching that zone. And Wright does so well. But she had an opportunity on that last pitch. Right ahead and count. 0 and 2. This is inside to Holloway. Coming into tonight's game, second on the team with a 367 batting average. This is outside to Holloway and Full count now. This is game one of a three game series this weekend. ECC softball action. I'm Suzanne Bush joined alongside my season long partner, Joanna Lane. And Joanna and I will be back for game two of the series tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. A little slow roller to left hand side. A little double pump by Anna Gold gets the ball over to Tapia at first for out number one to retire Gabby Holloway. Holloway with a few words of wisdom imparted to Bailey Richardson. Richardson with a big go-ahead home run. The, uh, Louisville had a midweek game in Oxford, Ohio against Miami University, and Bailey hit quite the home run to go ahead in the top of the seventh. Miami came back to win that game in the bottom of the seventh. So Louisville looking to bounce back after that loss. A swing and a miss there from Richardson. Bailey getting her third home run of the season. Balls behind the count, 0-2 to Jayla Wright. That's in the 
dirt. One and two now. One and two catches the inside part of the plate and Richardson will be retired of striking out looking. And Jayla Wright continuing to add to this strikeout total and see her just run this ball right into the inside half of the plate. It's a great pitch. Number six on the evening for Jayla Wright. Two outs now. It's Vanessa Miller at the plate with a single up the middle back in the second. Made it all the way to third where she was stranded. Great calls time. It's a thumbs up from Free Lake behind the plate. Strike. Nice pitch there from Jayla Wright. Again, another time called here by Jayla Wright as she steps off the rubber. On this, fouls it off. Up the right hand side. Tapia will gather that in foul territory. Swung on, off the screen, Miller will stay at first. That is one way to capitalize, <laughs> right? Then find your way on base and make something work for you again. Just the deception of this pitch that Debbie doing, but oh my. Definitely wouldn't mind that comparison. Two outs here, Vanessa Miller on the base path for the car. It's Ali Alexander, the junior from Taylorsville, Kentucky at the plate. Alexander with the walk back in the second. One of two walks issued by Jayla Wright. Miller will be thrown out at second base, so Alexander will come back to the plate in the bottom of the fifth for the call. Yeah, Duke is halfway to being able to score some runs, right? They're getting the base runners on, but haven't been able to come up with that timely hit. So far, Zabala in this defense, and this defense is taking care of lead outs as well. So even though they're seeing more base runners than they probably want to, I know that's a point of emphasis for this team this week, is being able to cut down on those. Being able to keep the lead runner off has been key. A great leadoff hit there. Finding that 5-6 gap, and Daisy has able to come up with that ball to keep it from going into left field. And Giselle Tapia just making some good contact, a little opposite field there, and Daisy has knows she does not have a play across the diamond. Yeah, that range is going to be too far, you know, for Richardson to be able to cut off. And, and that's the only chance you have at the out is if you can have a third baseman cut that off. Once you get that deep in the hole, any type of speed at the plate presents trouble. Speaking of trouble, Deanna Jennings coming up, someone that is, has been such a catalyst for this Duke team. Sophomore from Houston, Texas, 0 for 2 so far this evening. Looking to lay down that bunt. That'll be foul. And we have a 
New base runner on the base path for Giselle Toppy. It's Aaliyah Terrell. Tapia doing her job back in the dugout. Terrell at first. Jennings flashes the bunt, pulls it back. Delivery from Zabala high and outside. One and one, the count to Jennings. is swung on, one and two. as a freshman back in 2023, set the single season batting average record for the Blue Devils at 462, had 80 hits. The chopper back up to Zabala. She makes the throw over to Frizzell, just feels her position so well as a pitcher. She really does, and that lets your defense play such a different alignment. You know, even on that one, being able to keep Frizzell back at the base so she doesn't have to move for bag coverage because you can cover that half. So great job there, fielding the position. Allows the runner to move up, so Duke does get the extra 60 feet. Jennings doing her job with one away. It's Terrell, the base runner for the Blue Devils, in scoring position on second base. It's on a gold. Back to the plate to face Zabala. Zabala's pitch in for a strike. Gold ground out to second in the first. Hit by a pitch and had a stolen base in the third. Stranded at second base. Sloan outside. There from Gold. A good pitch by Zabala. And so that's the pitch that you have to be able to throw, and you can't throw that if you know you don't hit someone every once in a while, especially <laughs> if they are you know crowding or, or trying to take away that pitch. The one and two to Gold is swung on, fouled off. <laughs> This is the part of the matchup that Zabala has to find a way to finish here. You know, can she change something at the knees that's outside, spot a fastball, throw a changeup, climb a ladder with a rise ball? What can you do now that Gold's just sitting on that inside pitch? Sign outside. Two and two to Gold. Perfect. Six home runs on the season. Had two grand slams in one game. Against North Dakota State back in the middle of February. Most people go their whole lives without two grand slams. <laughs> she hits two grand slams in one game. In one game. Payoff pitch to gold. Little chopper in and on the hands. Alexander moving and talk about another stretch. Riley Frizzell. Looks like that might be reviewed. Coach Marissa Young asking for a video review of this. I don't blame her. You know, you always want to take a look. That's tough. All right, so the call is overturned. So Anna Gold will stay at first base. An outstanding stretch there by Frizzell. And a good move by Ali Alexander. Again, a slow roller, but Anna Gold 
at first. Runners on the corners now making way for Claire Davidson. Holly April now. Davidson at the plate. Davidson 0 for 2. Gold will take an additional 60 feet. Louisville knows how important this lead is. There's only one out. This infield is so tight right now, trying to avoid the run scoring at any cost. It is hard to score runs against this Duke pitching staff. You have the lead. You only have nine outs left. You want to make sure that you can preserve it if possible. So really tough spot for some of these defenders. One and one is fouled off the curtain. It's going to be one and two. One out here in the top of the fifth. Terrell and Gold on the base path for the Blue Devils. This is outside. It'll be two and two now to Claire Davidson. Reigning ACC Player of the Week. On this inside, pitch fouls it off. Another two and two to Davidson. Swung on and missed. And another punch out as Zabala seems to have Davidson's number. Second strikeout of Davidson this game for Zabala. Well, this is a fantastic finish. Zabala stretching the zone. That's a huge strikeout for the second out of the inning. Zabala's third strikeout of the game. Now it's Amina Vega who has taken two balls off the elbow to get the free pass. Off speed, it just misses 2 0 the count to Vega. And when you look at where Vega is in this batter's box, you see how tight she is. And then just your natural hip hinge, right? When you're hitting, you're going to lean forward. You can see that she's already in the river. So anything that's in there, really, it should not be awarded a base. You should have to stay unless that ball comes in the batter's box. And kudos to her. You take a pitch away if you can do that. Not everybody can, but she's done it well today. More from DeBerry, Florida. Catch there by Kylie Goff. That one gets away from Zabala. Three and one, the count to Vega. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. Two base runners on for Duke. A swing and a miss. A good pitch there by Zabala. Full count now to Vega. Challenging Vega on that pitch that she's looking for. And the mano y mano out there right now. And the payoff pitch to Vega. Vega will get another free pass. This one based on balls. That'll juice the bases for the Blue Devils. Take a look here around. It's Terrell. Gold and now Vega on the base pass for the Blue Devils. It'll be Francesca Freelick at the plate. Oh, it's a well struck ball into center field. Chelsea Mack moves to her left, makes the grab. Three are stranded. Bottom of the fifth here, Ali Alexander swings and misses at that off-speed pitch from Jayla Wright. The game summary here, Duke 
No runs on two hits, no errors. Louisville one run on two hits. Duke stranding eight so far this game. So Jayla Wright with some outstanding numbers there. Seven strikeouts, only two hits. But again, Louisville able to capitalize on the hits that they've been given, the walk, one of the walks they were given. Well, for Louisville, that offensive philosophy has been put the ball in play, put pressure on defense, make it make errors, take the walk, take the hit by pitches. But Duke just doesn't do that. You know, they don't make a lot of errors. They don't hit a lot of people. They don't walk a lot of people. So it's challenging a little bit of this philosophy from some of the hitters in the Louisville lineup. And so far, they've responded, found ways on, have worked a couple walks. A much different look than we've seen in earlier games from this team. Two and two is the count to Ali Alexander. Swings on this, and Wright continues to add to her total. That's eight on the day. It's out number one for the Blue Devils. And now it's Kylie Goff back to the plate. reached on a fielder's choice. Back in the second. Chops this one foul. Just misses one and one to golf. <laughs> Off speed just misses two and one now to Kylie Goff. The senior from West Lafayette, Indiana. <laughs> Swing and a miss there from Goff. Looking at the matchups here between Duke and Louisville. Duke leads the series eight to four. And these two teams met last season. Duke took games one and two. Louisville took game three, 13 to nine. You can see fairly evenly matched on the scoring between these two teams, 56 to 49. And that's another punch out, it's number nine. Back to back K's for Jayla Wright. Wright continues to challenge these Louisville hitters. And you know, you really only have a couple options. <laughs> you can jump on something much earlier in the count when you have an opportunity or you just have to keep swinging and right now for Louisville having a hard time figuring it out as Wright is dealing. Right, the last five batters she has faced, four of those have been strikeouts. She puts the shift back on here with Mack at the plate. Mack, her first at bat facing Jayla Wright, was given the walk. Made it all the way home, has scored a run back in the first, the only run so far of tonight's game. Little chopper up the middle, Mack with a lot of speed, and how about that web gem? Kelly Torres to the plate for the Blue Devils. Six, seven, and eight due up. Torres over two, 
Ground out to short in the second, was hit by a pitch, made it to second base, and the four is stranded there. As well as off speed is popped up. And will be out of play into the Blue Devils bullpen. Great crowd here on hand at Don Tabina Field at Ulmer Stadium. As well as pitch high and outside, it's 57 degrees. There at the stands. But the rain held off for us. Looks like it's been threatening all afternoon. However, not raining here at Ulmer. And this is fouled up and on to the roof of the Cutter Center. Isabella coming into the sixth inning. We talked about how she doesn't finish a lot of games. She's at an 80 pitch count coming into this at bat with Torres. Still looks very sharp. Change up to get started earning a, a strike call and working a little bit deeper in counts right now than she was at that first inning, but still proving effective velocity and accuracy. Two and two, swung on and drilled, but that will be well foul. Yeah, Joanna, to your point, you talked about Louisville pitching as a staff, not a whole lot of complete games. Oh, there it goes around the roundabout. <laughs> Zabala, the only pitcher on the staff with four complete games. None of the other pitchers have gone the distance. It's off speed is sent into left field, giving chase. That'll stay fair. Garrity gets it into Alexander at second base and a single for Kelly Torres. And the leadoff hits continue for Duke. We've seen so many leadoff hitters get on base. And we had the first batter Jennings of the game was retired. But after that, this Duke team has found a way to find a base path and keeps the opportunities coming. See that just lands on the inside of the white line. And now it's Sarah Goddard looking to lay down that bunt. Goes to Zabala. Zabala. Over to Alexander for the put out, out number one. And again, Zabala just doing a great job fielding her position. She likes to play defense. You know, we talk about those PFPs, the pitcher fielding practices. She does a good job with that. And I think she probably challenges the infield when she has the opportunity. But again, another sacrifice hit, something we haven't seen Duke do, moving a runner into scoring position. This is inside to Jada Baker. Baker a walk and a strikeout on her resume for this evening. Third and fourth frames, respectively. Swings on this, sky high into right center field, moving well into right field is Chelsea Mack. Gets the ball in to Daisy Hess, who applies the tag. Able to get back on the bag in time is Kelly Torres. I don't think Torres expected that throw to come behind her. Good job from Mac of reading the situation. Not really believing that Torres is going to tag. She's trying to draw a throw, but ends up drawing it behind her. Gets her foot back in there. It's two outs now, four cards. It's Tapia. Got the single. Moved a shortstop. Kind of in that 5-6 gap, but Daisy has able to backhand that ball. No throw to be had, though. Found herself aboard. Great throw there by Kylie Goff as that ball was in front of her, and Holly Ape. That call will be upheld. But you have to go to the, you've got you the do. reviews Absolutely. that you might as well use them. And Absolutely, you're, you're in the sixth, right? You have just the two opportunities for review. So it's the 0 and 1 to Tapia. 
Pardon me. It looks like they're having a little discrepancy here. Tapia was under the impression it's one and one. <laughs> That is confirmed. One and one is the count to Giselle Tapia. It's one for two on the day. Two outs here in the top of the six. Swung on, fouled off. Over the dugout of the cards. Gets away from Goff. Zabala will apply the tag twice, and she is finally out. A great play. Oh, that hosting in the postseason is a huge indicator of being able to move on. Well, Virginia Tech stands atop the ACC standing, standings right now. Already swept three series. So they're 9-0, so they're able to go non-conference now. Have a little great, you know, practice with Alabama to, to get them ready for that postseason play, bolster that RPI that we've talked a lot about. And, you know, interesting matchup there to, to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, definitely. And as those teams, you know, look ahead, it lets them have that competition and the, you know, sharpening the sword, so to speak, stays high. And, you know, you have games that, you know, sometimes aren't that way. So definitely a great non-conference matchup. It's Paige Garrity at the plate to face Jayla Wright here in the bottom of the sixth. One and one, the count to Garrity. Pair, pair of ground outs in the first and the third. Garrity putting a swing on that one, trying to work her way on base. This shift for Duke has proved problematic a little bit for these Louisville short game hitters and, and really trying to find a way to maybe challenge Jayla right here to field her position might be the best bet you have. Moving to her left. It's Jada Baker who gets the out at first, retires Paige Garrity. So the shift works. Jada Baker comes up with that ball and out number one for the Blue Devils. It'll be Daisy Hess. One of two hits for the cards, a double and an RBI. The first. And you can see Louisville one for five in leadoff batters and one for six in with runners on, one for five in scoring position. You know, and, and Daisy Hess again capitalizing on the fact that Chelsea Mack was given that walk, able to score her. You have Mack coming through in that opportunity with a runner in scoring position. And, you know, for this Louisville team, that's been the bane of their existence a little bit offensively is the situational hitting and what a difference one at bat can make one walk that's what we've seen so far in this game that is the difference maker to this point so Hess with a double on a resume and flew out to center field in the third Two and zero to Hess. Nice and low. Three and zero now. That's in for a strike. That 
misses. And Daisy Hess is aboard with the walk. And again, three walks for Jayla Wright. She came in with just 11 right on the season. Yep, absolutely. And, and that's been a big thing that has helped this Duke team find success is limiting those free passes and just struggle a little bit with the zone. And honestly, the majority of the hitters that she's facing, they're helping her cause by chasing those marginal pitches. It's been the very plate disciplined Hess and others that have worked that walk and, and made that their benefit, but it's a tough task to do. That's a wild pitch. So Hess takes 60 feet, round second, and finds herself at third safe. How about not only swiping 60, but an additional 60 on that wild pitch from Jayla Wright? Yeah, when Daisy Hess saw that ball hit and come up in the air, she knew that she was going to be at third. This is the one thing you get out of the home field advantage. We've seen three balls do this so far, and she was not slowing down. She hit second in full stride, all the way in to third, and now she stands 60 feet away, only one out. Rindecker having a quick word with pitcher Jayla Wright. One and oh to Frizzell, swung on. Right with Frizzell's number so far today, two of those strikeouts, two of those nine strikeouts have been Frizzell's. This is tough because we know that Coach April loves the squeeze butt, right? <laughs> we know she loves it, but you also know that Frizzell is more of a sack fly yeah. the type. So this is gonna challenge her a little bit. Good pitch there, taken by Frizzell. That's the pitch count now in triple digits for Jayla Wright. One and two to Frizzell. Great block there by Freelick. Two and two misses. Now it's full count to Frizzell. Has 60 feet away from home plate. You can just feel the anticipation from both teams. It's Riley Frizzell, one out, base runner on third. You talk about some pressure. Yeah, that's a really hard thing to do. And you know, for a Lily Walker, I think you have to think it's less about that pitch to Frizzell and it's more about, okay, now starting with your own batter and what does that look like? For Walker, you're gonna see a really good change up. She's very consistent. She'll work all zones. It is a different look. She's a lefty, has that crafty lefty spin, but she wants the ball. And I think this is a perfect setting if you want the ball because now you've got one out runners at first and third and Gabby Holloway up and Holloway hasn't had a lot of success today, uh, but has been swinging the bat well as of late. Get a good look there at the pinch runner now at first, Pickle Winkler. Winkler, the sophomore from Crofton, Kentucky. Off speed in for a strike to Holloway. Good look at that flip change. She's very effective, throws it well. So runners at the corners for the cards. Holloway drives one up the middle. Hess will score. And cards lead it 2-0 with a single off the bat of Gabby Holloway.
And that is a huge insurance run, absolutely huge. And credit to Holloway, she didn't even try to do too much at all. Stays in her hitting position, stays in her legs, and just gets a barrel on the ball. She hits so hard, generates so much power, enough speed to get that ball back up through the middle. Puts another one on the board here for Louisville. And now it's going to be Mia Forsyth taking over for running duties for Holloway. So you got Pickle Winkler in second, Mia Forsyth at first, and it's Bailey Richardson to the plate for the cards. One out here for the Blue Devils defense. So cards with lots of speed on the base path now. Bailey Richardson. Over two on the day. A pair of those strikeouts. Lines out. Vega unable to make that throw, but makes a great catch. Second base. Now runners at the corners. Two outs with that line out. Good contact there by Bailey Richardson. And heads up base running for Mia Forsythe, being able to see that retreat. Return to the bag, putting her body between the throw coming and the base. So it's Winkler at third, Forsyth at first, Vanessa Miller at the plate, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Now facing Lily Walker in the circle, a lefty lefty matchup. First pitch from Walker in for a strike. Behind in the count, 0 and 2. Sometimes you just think you know what you're going to get, and you, you take a guess <laughs> and you hack at it. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you have a short memory. You know, don't let that pitch set you up for the next one. The 0 and 2 to Miller. A little check swing. And she is out. That'll be a punch out for Lily Walker. Louisville strands two, but they get stands as well. Looking to watch Alyssa Zabala close this out. It's alumni of the U of L softball program and the berm, hanging out with their dog. So it's Giselle Tapia. Here they are, Matt Hurst. One of the best pinch hitters we've seen in a Cards jersey. Tapia one for two in tonight's game. Ground out to pitcher in the third. A single with the left hand side in the fifth. This ball's pitch misses outside. Kylie Goff wants a quick word with her pitcher. Yeah, going three and zero. Oh. So the number nine hitter <laughs> to close out the seventh is not, I think, what they had in mind. We talked about this a lot with Zabala being able to attack these hitters, challenge with intentional pitches. So she can come back here with Tapia. 3 0 is in for a strike. find herself aboard with the walk. Third walk given by Zabala. And a pinch runner here for Tapia. Kelsey Zampa. Six consecutive innings that Duke has found a way to get the leadoff hitter aboard. Have not been able to do anything with it, but when you have an offense that this potent, you have to be nervous about that. Only a matter of time. 
The bunt is down. Nothing can be done. And a great bunt there by Deanna Jennings. We showed a graphic earlier about situational hitting. Well, Duke doing just what they need to do here to advance runners. Great bunt here by Jennings. I can see Jennings just making this about the placement and being able to put that in the middle of everyone. Nobody had a shot with her speed. See graphic there. Five for six on leadoff batters. This is up and in on the hands. Goff under it. She'll make the grab. It's out number one. Runners will stay put. Zampa at second, Jennings at first. That was on a gold that popped up in foul territory to Kylie Goff. And now it's Claire Davidson, who has been awfully quiet this evening. Two strikeouts and a flyout on her resume for game one here of this series. Swing a miss there. Zabala throws that one by. And for Davidson, you know, 50% of her at bats result in extra base hits, or of her hits rather, for extra bases. And she's just so powerful. OPS of a 1.3. I mean, you just, you get a little nervous, right, if, she, if she's over because she has the ability to, to do so many good things. And Zabala, Give her a lot of credit too. She's doing a great job with all of these hitters and staying in the moment. That's been a challenge. You, know, you can just tell by looking at her that she's been able to do a really good job at that, taking this one pitch at a time tonight. They're dancing back in the box. Zabala's pitch misses high. Three and one now to Claire Davidson, the ACC Player of the Week. Right, that catches the outside part of the plate, pushing the count full. Come on, come on, Went out here in the top of the seventh. Oh, looking to go distance here for the cards. Lines up the left-hand side off the glove of Richardson. One will score. And Jennings will stay at third as Duke cuts the lead in half. Yeah, and like we said, just a matter of time, such a great plate presence. You can see she extends, able to barrel this up, keep it just inside. The foul line past the diving Richardson to plate Duke's first run of the game. And, you know, they haven't been shut out since the first game of the season against Oklahoma. So to think that, you know, you'd really be able to keep them off the board at all is a tough task. But now it comes down to preserving your lead. First pitch into Vega in for a strike. Vega been given three free passes so far tonight. Two hit by pitches, one walk. Zabala so working very quickly. That misses high and outside. One and one, the count to Vega. And you see this sometimes, the game speeds up a little bit for Zabala. She'll start to bounce a little bit more. She'll take even less time between pitches. So just making sure whatever cadence she's in, that it's her directive. You know, that that's the speed she wants to work. Works ahead in the count one and two here as Vega fouls that pitch off. field and well foul. Everyone will reset. So it's 
Deanna Jennings, the base runner at third. Claire Davidson at second. Getting a double into that left-hand side. One out. Swing and a miss, and that is a huge strikeout for Alyssa Zabala. Yeah, definitely a massive pitch and a great sequence being able to climb the ladder. Haven't seen her work up that often, but she has gotten at least two strikeouts on that pitch and really changing the eye plane, changing the view, couldn't hold off of it. And she's a one out away. Listen, hide inside. Francesca Freelick at the plate for the Blue Devils. Sack bunt in the second. Reached on a fielder's choice in the fourth. Flew out to center field in the fifth. That catches the outside part of the plate. Two outs here. Cards looking to take game one of a three-game series. Duke getting one across the board here in the top of the seven. Two base runners still in scoring position. Pitch misses high and outside. Two and one, the count to Freelick. Senior from Lexington, Massachusetts. Steps back into the batter's box. In on the hands, and this will drop in shallow left field. Two will score, and Duke takes the lead. Off the bat, a Freelick. That's just a tough break. Freelick being able to find the green, and Zabala putting herself in a great position, but give credit to Freelick on this. Doesn't give up, gets handcuffed, barrel misses, but she muscles through on the handle of the bat with two outs and everybody on the move, able to plate two runs. And Duke takes their first lead of the game, three to two. Big swing and a miss there from Kelly Torres. Torres one for three on the night. Ground out, hit by pitch, a single. Facing some adversity here. Making a big comeback here in the top of the seventh. This is low to Torres. Absolutely sky high, but it will be a foul ball. Everyone will reset. Torres, though, got a hold of that, barreled it up. She did, and that's the momentum shift, right? This Duke team has been pressing and toying and getting closer and closer, and now that they've opened those gates a little bit, you can see just the confidence shift, being able to take much more free swings. Ball misses, full count now to Kelly Torres, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And another walk given by Zabala. The dugout. Boo's first pitch in for a strike. Missing Sarah Goddard. And Goddard over three on the night. It's in the dirt. Got Francesca Freelick at second. Kelly Torres at first. Threatening on the base pass for the Blue Devils. One and one. The count to the senior. Carmel, Indiana, and Booz pitch in for a strike. One and two now. Yeah. 
is outside. in the dirt. It'll be a full count now to Sarah Goddard. You wait, buddy. Payoff pitch from Boo. Swung on and that'll be just foul. Everyone will reset. gets the walk. Bases are juiced. That's Jada Baker. Bases loaded, two outs. Looks like there's We're gonna see a pinch hitter here for Duke. They're just the freshman from League City, Texas. Who's pitched into Burgess in for a strike? They're just 46 at bats on the season, 15 hits. 13 RBIs, does have a home run, a triple, four doubles. Check swing there. Saying she went, broke the plane. 0 and 2 to Burgess. A absolute moon ball, but under it is Paige Garrity. The basin for Allie Alexander. Junior from River Forest, Illinois. Yeah. Foul ball there. Right at a 200 batting average. Has seven hits. Over 35 at bats. If you're Louisville in this situation, really challenging your student athletes to take this one pitch at a time you know, and trying to make sure that they have a confidence and resilience about them. You know, it can be so deflating when you think you've got it under control and, and you watch it slip away in the top of the seventh. And then on the flip side, if you're Duke, you know, you want to ride that momentum that you just had. You want to attack these hitters. You know, if, if you are Lily Walker and really challenge Louisville to do something outside of their comfort zone. Walker really challenging with that off-speed pitch. Pitch before that. Two and two, the count to Maddie Grant. Grant sends this one foul. a well-struck ball into right center field. Maddie Grant will round first. And she is safe at 
second. Talk about a clutch pinch hit for Maddie Grant. Gets a double to get things started for the cards. That's huge, and Grant's had some opportunities. You see her just stick with this, barrel this thing up, drive it into that right center gap. Turn on the Jets, she was wheeling. Everybody, I think, screaming at her. <laughs> Finding her way into second base, and, and that's what this Louisville team needs, right? It's a little bit of life. Hey, we're not done. Three outs to work with. Off reached in the second on a fielder's choice, struck out in the fifth. Facing at that point, Jayla Wright. First time facing Lily Walker here. We're gonna lay that bunt down. Talk about perfect execution there. Great sacrifice bunt by Kylie Goff to move Thatcher up 60 feet. Yeah, you kind of assume that might be the call that we see when Goff stays in in that situation, sometimes it's hit for there, but definitely using the sacrifice bunt to get that tying run, most important run, 60 feet away. And, and Chelsea Mack has done a good job of really challenging this shift. It's a little bit difficult with the runner on third and everybody's so close. We'll see if Mack can find a way on here. Looks like the squeeze. <laughs> Is on, Joanna. You mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. Coach Holly April not shying away from the squeeze bunt. Again, the tying run at third base. It's Katie Thatcher. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. A little check swing there, and they say she breaks the plane. One and one now. And on that first pitch to Mac, a little bit of it is, okay, well, how are you going to play this with the runner at third, right? How are you going to see this infield move, and where's that hole going to open? I'm trying to create some opportunity here. One and one to Mac. Ah! Able to make contact with that. Now one and two. K for Lily Walker to get the second out. Duke one out away from making this a huge comeback here in the seventh. Yep, this is a huge pitch. You can see that ball just continuing to trail away. I think Mac thought it was going to miss. It catches the corner. And the shift will stay on here in the infield for the Blue Devils. Paige Garrity with three ground outs to the infield. Swing and miss there from Garrity. Thatcher, the base runner on third. That catches the outside part of the plate as Walker works ahead in the count and the Blue Devils are one strike away from calling game, getting three runs across the plate in the top of the seventh. Little chopper over to the left-hand side. Jada Baker makes the final out of the game. Joanna, this game had a little bit of everything. It did. It had a lot of everything. And for
has fled Forgetting the depths and despair I find my light and reclaim my heart with all my hearts that are lost in the shadows of doubt I'll find it again, I'll scream and shout Through the trials and tears, I'll never stop Till my heart is found in the pain drops I draw near to the beating of my heart loud and clear For though it was lost, it's never too late To find my heart again and seal my fate In the journey of life